Oh, what another beautiful day in paradise. Praise Elon! Well, hello friends and welcome to a very important new electric car. It's the Tesla Model Y. Okay, it's not that new, it's been around for quite a while now, but not here. If you're in the UK, chances are you've not seen one of these on the road yet, but you will soon, because just last weekend at multiple locations around the UK, Tesla hosted Model Y delivery events where eager customers were finally united with their shiny new cars. There is no question that this is a very important car. Tesla are the most popular electric car brand. This on paper is their best car. It takes the Model 3 recipe and adds more space. That's a winning recipe on paper. But to find out just how good this car really is, to find out just how easy it would be to live with day to day, I'm gonna live in it for 24 hours. I'm not I'm not insane, I'm not doing a week in here. So yeah, we're going camping. It's gonna be soggy, soggy fun. But as well as just having a bit of a laugh and finding out just how roomy this car is in the back, there is a bigger, deeper question that I would like to get an answer to from this video. And that is, is Tesla still the dominant force it once was? With the competition getting stiffer and stiffer with every passing month, is Tesla still at the top of the food chain? If yes, how have they achieved that? And if no, what went wrong? So this is the Tesla Model Y. That is some very English weather, and this is fully charged. Farnborough, Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney, the number one festival for clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's fully charged live in Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or fully charged live UK, supported by LV, we cannot wait to see you there. What a beautiful British afternoon. This is exactly how I imagine it. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Jag, what are the logistics of this sleeping arrangement? Inflatable mattress, sleeping bag, grow up. I've got a bespoke bed set. I found a company online called Dreamcase who make bespoke bed sets for various cars. Tesla, they do every single Tesla model. And they very kindly sent me one. Look at this. It's a thing of beauty. I didn't they didn't pay me to say this, they're just really nice people. And it's quite fantastic, this set. Never put it together before, but I've had a look at it. It seems pretty straightforward. There's no screws involved, so let's just wing it. Oh, yes. What this? Oh, these are my, these are my blinds. You've seen rear leg room tests from me before, but what about a long boy in the boot? Six foot five? This'll work. Oh, I've just seen those chaps over there. Got a unicorn Barcelona. Show off. Oh. oh, this is amazing. Lovely coffee colored number. This is brilliant. Oh. You know, this whole camping malarkey, it doesn't have to be weeing in a bucket and then using that wee to make coffee in the morning or whatever it is people do when they go camping. It can be luxury. It can be civilized. It's not super thick, but then of course, you can get a Tesla. Got a heater. It doesn't need to be that warm. It's not going to be cold in here. I have a very unique duvet cover method. You have to become one with the duvet cover. Works every time. Works every time. It's all magnets. Oh, you f We'll come back to that one. <laughs> and I don't know how it works. Oh, oh. It's the wrong side. Oh, yeah. Is anyone gonna learn anything from this video? 
Is this going to be an informative video? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So this is... Uh, that's good. I knew I kept you around for a reason, Andrew. Should have done this outside the car. Step one, ascertain magnet position. Got it. Yes! <laughs> so good. <gasps> Front, rear, little side bits. Ah, that's genius. This is brilliant. Now, one thing I know that people are going to ask about in the comments is build quality. Has it improved? Also, where are these cars being built? Well, the UK cars, as I understand it, will all be built in China. And in my limited experience, the Chinese built Teslas are a little bit better off build quality wise than the ones coming out of the Fremont factory. Panel gaps are not exactly minuscule, but they are at least consistently quite large. They're the same size across the car. That size is quite big. This isn't great. I've just noticed uh, this panel appears to be trying to escape the rest of the car. And there's a couple of little things inside as well. Build quality continues to be a weakness of Tesla's, quite frankly. And either you don't mind or you do. There are two schools of thought. You can either say to yourself, well, the speed at which they're building these things and the quality of the important hardware is so good that I can forgive this. Or you could say, £55,000 is an awful lot of money for a car that is a bit falling apart the day it leaves the factory. Let's talk about that price, actually. 55 k that's five grand more than the equivalent Model 3. I say equivalent because there is no single motor standard range Model Y at present. There's the long range and there's the performance. So if you compare it to the long range Model 3, five grand more. And it's an interesting price, 55 k if you look at the sort of electric SUV landscape because it's comfortably less than the posh branded ones, the Audi e-trons, the EQCs, the Jaguar I-Paces, well underneath those. But it's a good chunk more than that lower tier made up of the ID4, the Ionic 5, the EV6. Get this, a top spec, fully boxes checked Hyundai Ionic 5 is about £10,000 less than an entry level. Model Y. So this has to comprehensively be better than that very, very good electric family car. That's a lot of pressure. Anyway, getting a bit chilly, a bit drizzly. Shall we have a cup of tea? Cup of tea? Come on. Now, there are many perks to camping in an electric car. One of the big ones is you can use it, its power, without polluting into the environment. If you wanted to run a nine volt kettle, for example, off the cigarette lighter in your ICE car, well, you'd be pumping nasty fumes into the air the whole time you were doing it. Electric cars, not so. And with Teslas in particular, there is actually a camping mode whereby the heating stays on, the power ports stay on without anything else in the car running. And if the car gets down to a certain battery percentage, I think 20% it kills everything. We're not gonna to need to worry about that tonight. One small gripe I have with the Tesla, lack of a domestic power socket. If I was in an Ionic 5 or an EV6, I could bring a three pin plug powered device. I could have brought my electric keyboard, my telly, my Xbox. We are limited to the nine volt on this occasion or USB-C, but that's okay. Could be worse. This seems safe, right? Right, infotainment. I want to talk about this system because for me, it continues to be one of, if not the biggest selling points. It's just so user friendly. And actually, there was a recent software update which ruffled a few feathers. There was serious discourse in the forums about it because they changed a few things. Namely, they made it cleaner by having less buttons down here, which meant you had to press one more time to get to various things, which is a bit of a faff, but it's still fantastic. It's just so incredibly user-friendly. It's got a very Apple feel to it, which I think is probably quite deliberate. And that is high praise as far as software goes. Big buttons, all very clear. Everything is sort of just where you think it's going to be okay. Is it entirely necessary that this 
is how I move my wheel? Hmm, probably not, but it's kind of cool. Navigation. I love the way when I put my route in, if it's further than the amount of range I've got, the car just adds a stop at a supercharger that's on the way. I don't even have to think about charging. Other brands have imitated. No one does it quite as fluidly and flawlessly as Tesla. And then you've got the silly stuff as well. I can make the car fart. That's, that's actually quite funny. We've also got streaming services, which are gonna come in very handy this evening as I lie in my bed boot watching Netflix. My gripe is the quality once again, because it all looks good, but none of it feels especially good. Again, you either care about this or you don't. Most people, I think, don't, but some, like me, can't help but think that that material just could have been a bit softer and squishier. And look at this. When I close that glove box, I can see a strip. I can practically get my finger in it with it closed, such as the quality or lack thereof of the fitment. This cladding on this A-pillar appears to be falling off already. I've had this car for about 12 hours and these are just the things that I've noticed at first. I find it hard to forgive. I find it hard to forgive for all the stuff that Tesla does extremely well. I personally would really struggle to spend this much money on a car so hastily put together. So Jack, we've got some questions from our Instagram. Yeah. Can I answer some? Yeah, go on, why not? From Discover Ecos has asked, is there a 12 volt in the boot or the front? Yes, there is. In fact, you can use it for your kettle, as we've established. Will SPN says, do you think it's worth buying given the supercharger network is opening to lots of competition? It's a big question. I think the fact that Tesla is opening out the supercharger network makes me respect the brand massively because that shows that they're truly for the cause it would strengthen their position to keep it to themselves so yes it makes other evs more appealing but it also makes me respect tesla more a question here from half man half potato good lord yeah uh, and it just says towing question mark 1580 kilos give or take a question from Irish lad, 24 years old. And how old do you suppose he is? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He changed Where do you it. think he's from? I think he changes it every year. Yeah. He says, can a man your height lay in the boot with the seats down? <laughs> <laughs> this is one thing, maybe the only thing that we can say that we thoroughly tested in this video. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. I'm a bit diagonal. I can't go full stretch, but I am very tall. But anyone below, let's say 6'2", could fully stretch out back here. Right. Okay, this one's from five hours something. Okay. How does the build quality compare to the TM3? To the Tesla Model 3, well, about the same. About the same. About the same, okay. i.e. room for improvement. Okay, another one on Twitter from Jay Jawad, mm -hmm. Jay Wood, saying, how well does the autopilot work on back roads? I don't use autopilot on back roads because it makes me a little bit nervous. I had a bad experience in a Model S once where I was zipping along the twisty B road and it just yanked the wheel. For me, self-driving in its current state is best used on uh, A roads and motorways, big straight roads with clear markings. Anything else and it's a little bit sketchy. <coughs> so this one's from Andrea Secco. Considering both long range, what's the main characteristic that makes the difference in price? Ooh, presumably that's both long range, as in the Model 3 versus the Model Y. Well, you're looking at it, mate. It's this. It's the space. That's the thing that you really get with this car. You get the bigger boot and you get a lot more headroom in the back. And for me, rear headroom is a real weak point of the Model 3. Those seats are not really for full-grown adults because of that swooping roof line. So what you get here is a proper four even five adult seater car and a bigger boot and a raised ride height, which I know a lot of people like. I think that might be the end. Yeah, that's the last one. Yeah. That's the last one. That's the lot. That's it all. All right. That's all the questions. Is it bedtime? Yeah, I'm gonna finish this race. And then... Go on, finish yeah. the race. Finish it. You're absolutely smoking, Jesse. Good Lord.
It's about four o'clock in the morning. It's very cold in here because um, I didn't put my charge in the car before we left. And camp mode turns itself off when the battery gets down to 20%. It's very cold. Also, while this bed set is very lovely, the truth is the car is not quite big enough for a six foot five freak. So I've kind of been fetal for the last few hours, and I'm not sure my spine is ever gonna unfetus. Yes! <laughs> Good morning. Um, I've had better night's sleeps. The, the fact that camp mode cut out in the middle of the night, leaving me with no heating, is on me. I didn't bring the car here with enough charge in it. Um, the fact that I don't quite fit in the back, I suppose that's also on me, really. You know, too many vegetables in my teenage years but this is very clever what I've done here you see I don't fit in the other direction but if I put my head here I can slot my feet through the front seats and rest them on the sort of armrest and now I fit that's the good news the bad news is I'm on a slight uphill incline and there's no blood in my feet are they still there I can't feel them Andy are my, are my feet still there First of all, can I say, if anyone even dares to comment on this video, something like, oh, you guys faked it, you sleep in a hotel. Look at me, look at the state of me. So, <clears throat> lessons, lessons from this thorough testing of the Tesla Model Y. Well, number one, it's bloody roomy, that thing. It is a big, spacious car, tons of headroom in the back seats, enormous boot, or a big, huge sort of bed area if you're so inclined. Do I fit? Not quite, but anyone of any normal height could sleep fully stretched in the back of that thing quite happily. Lesson number two, camping in an EV is very luxury. It really does civilize the whole experience, having access to heating and charging without having to emit nasty fumes into the air or disturb the peace. It's so serene and quiet here. And we haven't done anything to disturb that. Lesson number three, this was a stupid thing to do in winter. Cheers. What do you think, Andy? Tesla or bed set? Not great, but... You know, you should be not cheating like Bear grills. Plump and juicy. Right? Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Right, glad that's over. <laughs> On our way to the charger, let's have a little chat about what this thing's like to drive. We don't need to do a full dynamic review because there's not a whole lot of dynamics to review, it wafts along quite happily. This being a Tesla, it is alarmingly quick. In fact, let me just get through this twisty bit and I'll show you what I mean. Keep in mind, this is not the performance variant. This is the long range. And yeah, if I put my foot down, that's, it's so fast. It, uh, there is no need to buy a performance Tesla model. I've said it before, I will say it again. These long rangers, <laughs> quick enough. The ride. It's okay, it's not super refined. I've spent a bit of time in the ID4 today because that's our camera car and it's comfier, it's squashier. There's just a bit more sophistication to the way that it rides. This thing does crash around a little bit, but I just love the sense of glassiness in here. It's like waist height, the bottom of the windscreen. You are so, so exposed to the elements. It's almost like driving a convertible. I feel like I'm outside right now. Visibility is fantastic. You compare that to something like the Polestar, where the window line is sort of at your eye height. It's a bit claustrophobic and dark inside compared to this big, 
open glass house. I really like that about this car. We should talk a little bit about full self-driving because, well, where is it? There's an amazing montage somewhere on YouTube of Elon Musk promising that self-driving tech is only a year away. Every year for the last decade. I'm beginning to feel quite skeptical that it's close at all. And that's understandable because if you look at the driving I'm doing right now, you've got parked cars, you've got a learner up ahead, it's wet, the road markings aren't super clear. A child on a bicycle may zip out at any moment. That is a very difficult thing to code versus motorways, dual carriageways, A roads. It's hard. And it's even harder when only a handful of people are going to be using full self-driving tech while the rest are going to be doing it their dumb selves with their meat hands. I think Tesla may have gone a bit too early with their promises of that and I think it was a bad shout to be charging customers for it as early as they were. There is still so much about Tesla that is brilliant. Now that the competition is a little deeper, now that there are some properly good alternatives, it begs the question, what is the USP of Tesla? And for me, it's a couple of things. One, the hardware. No one seems capable of eking so many miles out of the battery pack, of making charges that just work and work so quickly in the way that Tesla do. The fundamental, essential technology of EVs, Tesla are the best at it because they've been doing it the longest. They've had the most practice. Well, we're here at the supercharger and look, look, I plugged it in, it started charging. It's currently doing 172 kilowatts. There are chargers out there, third party, non-Tesla ones that claim to be 350s and you plug it in and you're lucky if you get 80 kilowatts. I hate that this is still a cell because this should just be normal, but it's not. It's only for Teslas, even now. And this is still a huge reason to buy one of these. And like I said, between this, the quality of the hardware, and the general sense of being at the cutting edge, of getting all the cool toys before everyone else, there are still a lot of reasons to go Tesla. The competition is getting better and better and better. I think you'd be insane to not test an Ionic 5 before buying one of these. For example, likewise, I think you'd be pretty mad to not try an i4 or a Polestar before getting a Model 3, but what a lovely situation to be in. There are now different EVs in each segment of car that cater to different preferences, different priorities. That being said, Tesla's still right at the top for me. So there we have it, Model Y. My feet are so wet right now, I'm gonna go find a radiator to rest them on. Please do make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have been, thank you for watching. So if you enjoyed that episode with Jack, and who doesn't enjoy an episode with Jack? Everyone enjoys an episode with Jack. It's all here, Jack's really good, Jack's great, Jack's brilliant. Anyway, there's another episode down here with Jack, but there's one here with me, and that is the Patreon link, and up there you can subscribe to The Fully Charged Show.